Do you ever wonder why Savaka is a subject of such intense debate in India's political and social spheres? Well, it's not without reason. Vinayak Damodar Savaka, often known simply as Savaka, was a man of many parts, a freedom fighter, a prolific poet, a skilled writer, and a seasoned politician. His life and works have left an indelible mark on India's history, but the narrative surrounding Savarka is as complex as the man himself. He's a figure who stirs up strong emotions, with some venerating him as a staunch patriot, while others express deep criticism for his alleged crimes and extremist ideologies. His name is often brought up in political debates, with parties either upholding his contributions or questioning his legacy. This polarity of views only adds to the enigma that Savakar continues to be. Now let's delve into the origins of this intriguing figure. Born on May 28, 1883, in Bagur, a small village in Nashik, Savarkar's journey began in humble settings. This was a world far removed from the political turmoil and revolutionary movements that would later define his life. His parents, Damodarpan Savarkar and Radhabai, were known for their strong moral principles which would deeply influence young Savarkar. Savarkar's early years were marked by a thirst for knowledge. He was an avid reader, devouring books on a wide array of subjects. His education started in a local Marathi school in Nashik, and he later attended Ferguson College in Pune, where he studied subjects like history and political science. His academic pursuits, however, were not confined to the classroom. He had a keen interest in the world around him, and he was particularly moved by the stories of brave revolutionaries who fought against British rule. The nationalist movement was gaining momentum in India around this time, and it was not long before Savakar was swept up in it. His writings and speeches from this period reflect his growing disillusionment with British rule and his desire for India's independence. He started a youth group known as Mitra Mela, where he and his friends discussed the political situation in India and the need for a revolution. In college, Savaka's rebellious spirit began to take shape. He was deeply influenced by the works of Italian revolutionary Giuseppe Mazzini and the Irish revolutionaries. He began to see the possibility of a similar revolution in India. His writings from this period are filled with fiery rhetoric and a clear call to arms against the British rule. His academic prowess and his deep-seated nationalist beliefs led him to secure a scholarship to study law in England. But little did he know, this journey overseas would prove to be a turning point in his life, and he would soon find himself at the forefront of the fight for India's independence. But it was in England where Savarkar's journey as a revolutionary truly began. In 1906, Savarkar left the shores of India for England, not knowing that this journey would change his life forever. This journey was not merely a quest for higher education, but a burning desire to fuel the fire of freedom in the hearts of fellow Indians. In England, Savarkar found himself amidst a vibrant and diverse diaspora of Indians. This was where he came across India House, a hub of nationalist activity. Now, India House was not just a residence for Indian students, but it was a beating heart of anti-colonial sentiment. It was a place where ideas of freedom, democracy and nationalism were exchanged, debated and refined. Savarkar, with his sharp intellect and unyielding passion for freedom, quickly became a central figure in this revolutionary hub. His speeches and writings inspired many Indians, both in England and back home. He was not just a dreamer, but a doer, a man who put his words into action. He believed in the power of the pen as much as the strength of the sword. His booklet, The First War of Indian Independence, became a potent tool in encouraging the revolutionary spirit among Indians. But Savakar wasn't content with just inspiring words. He believed in practical steps towards freedom. He encouraged fellow Indians to learn warfare, to arm themselves, not just intellectually, but physically. He believed that a free India would only be possible when its people were ready to fight for it. However, his revolutionary activities were not to go unnoticed. 
The British authorities, alarmed by the rising tide of nationalism, kept a close eye on India House and its activities. Savarkar's fiery speeches, his writings, his unabashed call for complete freedom, soon caught their attention. His activities were seen as a direct threat to British rule in India. Consequently, he was arrested, marking the beginning of a long and arduous journey of imprisonment. However, Savarkar's revolutionary activities soon caught the attention of British authorities, leading to his arrest and subsequent imprisonment. His story, however, was far from over. The flame he ignited continued to burn bright, inspiring countless Indians to fight for their freedom. Savarkar's revolutionary zeal did not go unnoticed by the British, and he was sentenced to two life terms of imprisonment, totaling 50 years. Now, imagine this, a young revolutionary, confined to the haunting solitude of the cellular jail in the far-off Andaman and Nicobar Islands. It was here, in this dreadfully isolated prison, that Savarkar spent a decade of his life. He wasn't just a prisoner, though. Savarkar was a thinker, a writer. His confinement became a crucible for his ideas. He penned several works during this time, his words echoing off the cold stone walls of his cell and finding their way to the outside world. His writings were a testament to his indomitable spirit, his unyielding resolve and his unfaltering belief in his cause. However, this period of imprisonment was also a time of transformation for Savarkar. His ideologies underwent a shift, a pivot, if you will. He began to veer towards a more radical form of nationalism, one that was deeply rooted in Hindu identity. This ideological shift would mark the rest of his life and his legacy. In the year 1921, after 10 grueling years, Savarkar was released from prison. He returned to the mainland but he was a changed man. His experiences in prison had hardened him, shaped him, and he emerged with a new purpose. His subsequent involvement with the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, or RSS, and the Hindu Mahasabha marked a significant chapter in his life. He was now a political leader, a figure of influence, a voice that commanded attention. He propagated his ideas of Hindutva, of a unified Hindu nation. Savaka's life was a journey, a trajectory marked by fiery passion, relentless struggle and profound transformation. His ideologies, his actions and his legacy have been the subject of extensive debate and scrutiny, and they continue to be so. But Savarkar's life and legacy remain a subject of intense debate even after his death. Savarkar passed away on February 26, 1966, but his legacy continues to divide opinion in India. Whether revered as a patriot or criticized as a controversial figure, Savarkar remains a significant figure in the tapestry of India's history. His life and ideology have sparked numerous debates with his role in the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi being one of the most contentious. In the aftermath of Gandhi's assassination, Savarkar was arrested and tried as a co-conspirator. However, due to lack of conclusive evidence, he was acquitted. Yet, this chapter of history has cast a long shadow over Savarkar's legacy, leading to polarized views about his contributions. His ideologies, too, have been a source of considerable debate. Savarkar was an advocate of Hindutva, or Hindu nationalism, a philosophy that has been both lauded as a source of Hindu unity and criticized for its potential to breed communal disharmony. His views on social reform, such as his advocacy for the abolishment of caste-based discrimination, are appreciated by many, but his endorsement of militarism and violence as means to political ends has led to criticism. In contemporary India, Savarkar is a figure who continues to be revered by some political factions, particularly those aligned with Hindutva ideology. The Bharatiya Janata Party and the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, for instance, often hail him as a brave freedom fighter who stood up to British imperialism. On the other hand, there are many who view him as a divisive figure, criticizing his alleged role in Gandhi's assassination and his controversial ideologies. 
they argue that Savakat's legacy is more of a historical liability than an asset and that it is time to re-evaluate his place in India's historical narrative. Regardless of one's opinion, Savakat's influence on India's freedom struggle and subsequent political landscape is undeniable. His life continues to evoke passionate discussions, reflecting the complex and often contested nature of history itself. So, who was Savakar really? A patriot, a revolutionary, a controversial figure, or all of these? We've traversed the journey of a man who wore many hats. From his early life and education, we've seen how Savakar was shaped into an individual of strong convictions. His time as a revolutionary in England showed us his resolve and determination for India's freedom. Yet, his imprisonment and the aftermath brought forth a side of him that sparked controversy, leading to a legacy that is as divisive as it is significant. Savarkar was not simply black or white. He was a spectrum of greys. His life was a tapestry of courage, controversy, conviction and complexity. He was a man who dared to challenge the status quo for better or worse. He was a man who left an indelible mark on India's history. It's clear that Savarkar's life and legacy continue to shape and stir India's political and social discourse, making him an enigma that continues to fascinate us.